Hey, welcome back to InfoGamer. In this video, we're going to be going over the movement for our snake. Now, we're going to need to create two different scripts. The first one is a game controller script, which is going to handle our movement. And the second is a snake script, which is going to specify our snake and the difference between our snake and food and... Yeah, so let's go and create those scripts. So we're right now, we're in our scripts folder, and we're going to go create. C sharp script and we're gonna type game controller. Now we're going to create the snake script. So we'll go C sharp script and we'll type snake. Now we're gonna open both these scripts in Visual Studio. So once we have these scripts open in Visual Studios, we're going to need to create a couple variables for our game controller script. So at the top of our script, let's add a public game object. And let's call this snake prefab. Now we're going to need to create two snake script variables. So we'll type public and snake. And then we'll call this one head. And the next one, we'll type public snake and then this one will be tail. Now we'll need to create an integer, which will be public, type int, and then this will be capital N-E-S-W for north, east, south, west. And that's going to, this integer is going to specify which direction our snake is traveling. So let's create one more variable for now, and this will be a public, and then we're gonna call it a vector two, and we'll call it new pose for new position. Now we want to create a new function and this is going to be our movement function. So let's type void and we'll just call it movement. And then there's no parameters for this function. And what we're going to want to do is create a game object variable, a capital G and then we're going to call this temp. Now we're going to need to set our variable next pose to the position, the current position of our head object, our head variable. So to do that, we're going to type next pose and then set it equal to head dot transform dot position. And I have capital head I'm going to make all these lowercase real quick, except for my NESW. OK, that looks better. And now we're going to need to create a switch statement that's going to be dependent on our NESW variable. So to do this, we're going to type switch. And then in parentheses, we're going to type NESW. And then we're going to add curly braces. And we type case and zero and then we create a new line and we type break and we're going to create three more cases so the next one is case one colon and we type break and then we type case two and break and case three and break Now, the way a switch statement works is depending on the value of your variable, which is in the parentheses for the switch statement, so in this case, NESW, depending on the value, it will jump to whichever case is equal. And so our NESW is only going to ever have four different values, 0, 1, 2, and 3. 0 will be for north, or in other words, going up. One will be for east, or in other words, going right when you're looking at your screen. Two for down, and three for left. Now in each one of these cases, we're going to add one line of code, which is going to increment our next position by one in the direction that we're traveling. So we're going to type next position equals new 
and then vector2, and in parentheses we type next position dot x, and because we're going up we want to increment the y position for this zero case. So we type next position dot y plus one. Now we can copy this line of code and add it to the other three case statements. But we need to change the, the way it's incrementing the vector two, because if we leave it the same, it doesn't matter what direction it says we're traveling, we're going to be going up because we're incrementing by one in the y direction. So for east, if we're traveling to the east, which is right, we want to increment the x. So we'll add a plus one to the x. Then for going down, we want to subtract one on the y. And for going left, we want to subtract one from the x. Now the reason why we're doing this is because with our snake game, the way it moves, it doesn't move in one fluid motion from one position to another. It's more like jumping from one position to another. And since we're only incrementing by one unit and our cube for our snake body is one unit across and one unit in width and length or whatever, it's going to look like it's growing one unit at a time. Now we need to jump outside the switch statement, and this is where we're going to instantiate a new cube in the new position. So let's go ahead and type temp for our temp variable for game object, and we're going to set it equal to, and we're going to have to cast what we instantiate as a game object. So in parentheses, we type game object, and then we type instantiate, and in parentheses, we type our snake prefab. And then we have the next pose for the new position that we instantiate in. And then we want to do transform.rotation because we're going to attach this to a empty game object. And that game object is going to have a position of 0, 0, 0, and it's going to have a rotation of 0, 0, 0. And so all the cubes are going to be facing the same direction. Now, once we have that instantiation, there's going to be a couple more lines to this movement script, but we need to work on our snake script next. But before we do that, let's go ahead and just show you what this code is doing so far. So if we go to our hierarchy and we create an empty game object and we call it game controller and then we drag on our game controller script now we need to bring in a couple variables and so we want the snake our current snake in our scene at 000 to be the head but before we do that we need to attach the snake script to our snake prefab so let's drag in the snake script to our current snake that we have and then hit apply so it applies it to all the prefabs. Now what we can do is go to our game controller, grab our snake from our scene, drag it into the head, and we can drag it into the tail for now. Then what we need to do is drag in our snake prefab. So we'll go to our prefabs folder, we'll grab our snake, and we'll drag it into the snake prefab field. Now we can leave NESW at zero for now, and next position will be zero, zero because our current cube is at zero, zero. Actually, yes, it is. Okay, now what we need to do is hit play and see how it works. And it's not working. Oh, I know why it's not working, because we haven't applied our script yet. We haven't applied our function into an update. So in order to do that, we need to create a clock because we don't want this to run every frame. We want it to run more like every half a second. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's create a new function. And I'm going to add it in after the update. And we're going to type void. And then we're going to call it timer invoke. 
invoke. And there's no parameters. And now what we need to do is call our movement function. And we should be good with that for now. And in our start function, we're going to type invoke repeating. And then in, in quotes, we type timer invoke. Just as our function is named. And then we have the time that we want it to start, so zero, and the time that we want it to repeat. So let's put half second. And we need to add an F for float so that it registers the 0.5 as a float and not an integer. Now, as we save it, we can go back to Unity and test it out. So you can see that we added a new cube just above the current one and we keep repeating to add a cube in the same position and that's because we are incrementing the next position from the current head object but because we're not updating the head object to be the next object that we've instantiated we're not able to move it to the next position and then the next position and the next position and so in order to do that we need to go and change our snake script now it might not seem like very much is happening right now when we hit play, but we have the beginnings of movement and the beginnings of di direction. Because also, I'll show you real quick, if we were to change this NESW to a new value, say one, you'll see that rather than adding an object going up, it'll add an object to the right. So I'll go ahead and hit play. And you'll see, yes, we have an object on the right and they're all adding snakes to that same position rather than adding the snake above the current head. So we're gonna stop right here. And in the next video, we're gonna show you how to update the head object, the head snake, and that will perpetuate the movement in the direction that we're traveling. So stay tuned. Make sure that you figure this video out. If there's anything that you have questions about, leave them in the comments below. Like and subscribe and share with your friends. We'll see you next time.